Hi guys, good day. It's me, Teacher MJ. Our topic for today class, it's all about the loss of radicals. So without further ado, let's do this topic. So this is already part 2 of our video class. The part 1 of our video, we solve for this one. Numbers 1 and 2 rules. So we have the nth root of a raised to the power of n is equivalent to a. We explain this one and we do have some examples for this one. So feel free to see the video class. And for number 2, we have the product rule. We have the nth root of a multiplied by the nth root of b. So if they have the same index, simply copy the index and then you multiply the radicals. Okay, multiply a and b. So we also have examples for this class, so feel free to see the video. Alright, so this time, the third rule, we have the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b and is equivalent to the nth root of a over b. So therefore, if you have the same index, okay, if you have same index, you can just simply divide the radicand. So you can simply divide a and b. So this will be your answer. And we will give examples for this one class. And for number 4, we have the m, nth root of a, is equivalent to mn root of a. Or you can interchange, that would be nm, nth root of a. So we will give examples for this one class. Alright, let's try number 3. So let's try to give an example for this one. What if you have, okay, what if you have the square root of 50 divided by the square root of 2? So if the teacher will ask you to simplify this one, or dividing square root of 50 divided by the square root of 2. Now, if they have the same index, understood plus that in every square root, the index is 2. So understood that there's 2 here, so the index is 2. We can just simply write this one as the square root of 50. So you can divide 50 and 2. 50 divided by 2. Alright, can we divide 50 by 2? Yep, we can divide 50 by 2. 50 divided by 2. That would be 25. So this will be the square root of 25. So once again, class, if you have the same index, you can just simply divide the numbers inside this radical symbol. We call it radicands. So we can simply divide radicands, 50 and 2. So that would be copy the square root, then 50 divided by 2. That would be 25. Square root of 25. What would be the square root of 25, class? The square root of 25 that is 5. Why is that, sir? Because 5 times 5 is 25. So you think of a number that when you multiply it by itself, you get 25. And that is 5. So that's the answer class for number 1 example. Let's try number 2. So two, number 2 example. So what if you have... Okay, number 2 example. What if you have the square root of... Okay, the square root of 25 divided by the square root of 16. So, check class, the radicands. Can we divide 25 by 16? 25 divided by 16 class. Can we do that? Nope, we cannot divide 25 by 16. So, therefore, we can do this one class individually. Okay, we can do this one individually. Because we cannot divide 25 by 16. 25 divided by 16. 25 divided by 16, you will get a decimal answer. And we're not allowed to have a decimal answer for this one. So we can just do it individually, square root of 25 over the square root of 16. So what would be the square root of 25 class? That's correct. The square root of 25, that is 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. And what would be the square root of 16? That's correct. The square root of 16, that is 4. So therefore, our answer is 5 over 4. That's it class. Easy, right? Alright, so let's try another example. Okay, let me erase this one. Another example, class. I hope you get this one, number 3 example. The square root of 10 over the square root of 2. So, can we divide 10 by 2? So, if you can divide, class, you can make it as a whole. But if not, you can do it individually. Can we divide 10 by 2? Yep, we can divide 10 by 2. So, that would be the square root of 10. So, they have the same index. So, just copy square root, one square root. So, the square root of 10 over 2. Since we can divide 10 by 2, so you can make this one as a whole. So, 10 divided by 2, that would be the square root of 5. Do we have the square root of 5? Square root of 5 plus. You think of a number that when you multiply it by itself, you get 5. Nope, there is none. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 2. 3 times 3 is 9. So, we don't have a number that when you multiply it by itself, you get 5. So, this will be our final answer. Alright, so let's try number 4 example. What if you have 
Okay, what if you have the square root of 16 over the square root of x squared? Alright, so can we divide 16 by x squared? 16 divided by x squared. Can we divide? Nope, we cannot divide. So therefore, we can just do it individually. So this will be the square root of 16 over the square root of x squared. So, what will be the square root of 16 plus? So, the square root of 16, that is 4. Because 4 times 4, that is 16. So, the square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of x squared, so in rule number 1, if they have the same index, so same index, the index and the exponent, so if takes index and the exponent, you can just simply cancel this out. So, understood that there's 2 here, so we can just simply cancel this out if the exponent and the index are the same. So, therefore, the square root of x squared, that is x. Alright, and that's it, class. That's the answer for number four. Alright, so let's try last example for number three, rule number three, last example, class. So what if example number five, what if you have, okay, let's have this one, the fifth root of, okay, the fifth root of three over the fifth root of ten x raised to the power of 10. What if you have example like this? So the fifth root of the fifth root of 3 over the fifth root of x raised to the power of 10. So can we divide 3 by x raised to the power of 10? So can we divide that one? Nope, we cannot divide, so we can do it individually. So that will be the fifth root of 3 over the fifth root of x raised to the power of 10. Alright, so do we have the fifth root of 3? You think of a number that when you multiply it by itself 5 times, you get 3? Nope, there is none. So just simply copy class. Since we don't have the fifth root of 3, we can just simply copy this one. How about this one class? Do we have the fifth root of x raised to the power of 10? Yup, we can simplify this one. Okay, x raised to the power of 10 because we can 10 is divisible by 5. So, we can actually simplify this one. So, we can divide this one, class, the exponent and the index. Do you still remember, class, in writing radicals into exponential form? We can write this one as x. Then, this 10, the exponent 10, will be the numerator of the fractional exponent. And this 5 will be the denominator. So, we can write this one as this exponential form. And this will be the fifth root of 3 over... So, 10 divided by 5, that is 2. So, that would be x squared. And this will be our final answer class. Okay, so that that's it. So, 10 and 5, we can divide. So, you can just simply do it this way class. Just divide this one, 10 divided by 5, and that would be 2. So, you have x squared. So, 10 divided by 5, that is 2. Then, you put it outside on the radical symbol. Because if you do it manually, you can write this one class. Okay, let's do it manually. Okay, this denominator plus the fifth root of x raised to the power of 10. We can actually write this one as the fifth root of x raised to the power of 5 times x raised to the power of 5. Alright, we can factor this out by x raised to the power of 5 and x raised to the power of 5. And rule number 1, if they have the same index, so once again plus, in the loss of exponent, if they have the same base, if you're multiplying, same base, copy x, then you add the exponent 5 plus 5, that is 10. So that will be the same answer class. So therefore, if they have the same exponent and index, you can cancel this out. And you put it outside the radical symbol, that would be x. And you can also cancel this out, same 5, cancel this out, put it outside, times x. So that's why you have x times x, that is x squared. So that's why you have this answer class. Once again, it will take time if you do it this way. So just remember this one class. If the exponent is divisible by the index, just simply divide. 10 divided by 5, that is 2. So that's why we have x squared. Alright, so that's the rule number 3. So any questions for rule number 3? Alright, so you try this one class and you put your answer in the comment section down below. Let me check if you really understand our topic. So what if you have example number 6? So, what if you have the square root of 36 over, okay, 
the square root of x raised to the power of 10. So what would be your answer, class? So you try that one and you put your answer in the comment section down below. Alright, let's try rule number 4. Alright, so rule number 4 we have m and then n root of a is equivalent to mn root of a is equals to, or you can interchange, nm root of a. Let's try an example class. Example number 1 class. The 6th root of 4. Now, do we have a 6th root of 4? You think of a number class that when you multiply it by itself 6 times, we get 4. Do we have? Nope, there is none, right? Because 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, that is only 1. But for 2, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, times two, times two, 2 raised to the power of 6, that is 64. So we don't have a number that when you multiply it by itself 6 times, you get 4. So therefore, we can use this fourth law. So we can simplify the 6 by the cube root and square root, right? Of 4 because 3 times 2, if you multiply this one, the roots, once again, in the fourth law, you multiply the roots. So we have m times m, n, m times n, that is mn or nm. So we can write this one as cube root or square root of 4 or that would be square root and cube root of 4 so it's either of these two class so you can write this one or this one so you can erase two that's okay or you can put two that's actually okay so which of these two class that we will be using do we have the square root of 4 yep we have the square root of 4 in this scenario do we have the cube root of 4 you think of a number that when you multiply it by itself three times you get four Nope, there is none. So therefore, we cannot use this one. We will be using this one because we have the square root of 4. So we cannot use this one and this will be our solution. So we don't have the cube root of 4 but we have the square root of 4. What would be the square root of 4 class? So the square root of 4, that is 2. So therefore, we can just simply copy this cube root. So that would be 3. Then cube root of the square root of 4. So what would be the square root of 4? That is 2. You put it outside the radical symbol. You can cancel this out. Square root of 4, that is 2. So that's, this will be our final answer. Now once again, do not be confused, sir, why you cancel this out. Because this is the cube root of... So this square root of... This 4 plus, we can write this one as 2 squared, right? 2 squared. What do you mean by 2 squared? 2 squared, it means... 2 times 2 and 2 times 2 that is 4. This is just the same class. So we can cancel the index and uh, sorry the end the index and the exponent because this is the same. So exponent and index we can cancel this out. Rule number one, same index and exponent, you can cancel this out and just simply copy this radical. That's why you have two. Cube root of two. I hope you get this one class for rule number four. So for sixth root, we can simplify that one at cube root and square root. Let's try another example class. Okay, that's another example. What if you have the sixth root of eight? So what if what if you have that one class? The sixth root of eight. So therefore, we can write this one as sixth root of eight. That would be cube root and square root of eight, or we can have square root or cube root of eight. So, which do you think, class, that we can simplify this one? This this equation or this one? Do we have the square root of 8? You think of a number that when you multiply it by itself, you get 8? Nope, there is none. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 2. 3 times 3 is 9. So, there, no, we don't have. How about this one, class? Do we have the cube root of 8? You think of a number that when you multiply it by itself 3 times, you get 8? Yep. There is, we can multiply 2 by itself 3 times and we get 8, right? 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So therefore, we will be using this one. Alright, so this will be the square root and the cube root of 8 class. What will be the cube root of 8? That's correct, that is 2 because 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So that would be square root of Two. So this will be our answer. Cube root of 8, that is 2. So our answer will be square root of 2. Right? You can erase 2 plus, understood that in every square root, the index is 2. So this, this will be our answer class. The square root of 
So, Alright, so that's the answer. The sixth root of 8, the answer is the square root of 2. So once again, why is that square root of 2, sir? Because we can write this one as the square root and the cube root of 2 raised to the power of 3. And 2 raised to the power of 3, it means you multiply this 2 by itself 3 times. So 2 times 2 times 2, that is 8. Same index and exponent, we can cancel this out. And then you put it outside the radical symbol and you still have square root. So that's why you have the square root of 2. So you can erase two, square root of 2. Alright, let's try another example class for you to really understand this one. So this is the answer for example number 2. Example number 3, what if you have... Okay, let's try the 8th root of x raised to the power of 2. So what would be your answer class? The 8th root of x raised to the power of 2. How would you simplify that one? So this one, we can write this one as the 4th root and the square root because 4 times 2, that is 8, right? Of x raised to the power of 2. Or you can write this one as the square root and the 4th root of x raised to the power of 2. So this is just the same class because 2 times 4, that is 8. 4 times 2, that is 8. So, which do you think class we will be choosing? This first example or this one? First solution or the second solution? Yep, we use this the first solution because same index and exponent. Because 4 and 2, we cannot divide 2 by 4, right? 2 divided by 4, that cannot be. So 2 divided by 4, and that cannot be. You get a decimal answer. So therefore, we will be using this one. Alright, so we can cancel this out. Because this is the same expon uh, index and exponent, so we can cancel this out. And our answer will be the 4th root of x. Okay, 4th root of x. And that's it, plus that's the rule number 4. So I hope you get that one for rule number 4. You can simplify the index. So you try this one, class, and you put your answer on the comment section down below. Let me check if you really understand our topic. So what if you have 6th root of 27x cubed? So, what would be your answer, class? Alright, so you try this one and you put your answer in the comments section down below. Once again, this is Teacher MJ and I hope you learned something new today. If you like this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. You share it to your friends and to your classmates so that we can help more students. So, once again, class, our next topic will be simplifying radicals. So, feel free to see the video, class. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.